Training for a marathon can be tough both mentally and physically, and sometimes the thought of getting up to do yet another run can actually be more than we can bear. But there is something that you can do to spruce up your training plan that can still help you move closer to your marathon goal. Could this be the year that you reach your dream time goal and get a brand new personal best? Well, we might just have the secret for you, and believe it or not, it doesn't actually involve any more running. Yes, keep watching right to the end because Rick and I are going to be taking you through all the secret tips you need. But first up, please do hit subscribe and tap the bell icon so you get notified when we upload new videos all about running, which we do every week. Perhaps it's time to consider cross-training to mix up your marathon training. So cross-training is simply mixing up your running by adding in other disciplines to your training program. This can come with a number of benefits. Cross-training can improve your cardiovascular fitness and endurance, something that's essential for running a marathon. Mixing in other disciplines can put more focus on strengthening muscle groups that are neglected during your running training which can also help prevent injury. And it can give you a mental break from running, which at some point you're all gonna need. One non-running day might be all you need to keep things fresh and mix it up. Perhaps swapping out one of your easy runs for another activity could be the best thing for your training. The best way to choose what discipline to add into your training is to consider your goals. Not all cross training is created equal and different disciplines can offer you different training stimuli. A lot of us naturally think of cross training as heading to the gym and lifting weights, but don't be afraid to think outside of the box because there are some great sports out there that can support your running training. Although this might seem surprising, walking can be a great way to build your endurance. After all, it is still time on your feet, just at a much slower pace. Building in some regular hikes might be a great way to build your endurance while taking in the views at a bit more of a gentle pace than your regular runs. If you want something that gets your heart rate up a little bit higher, speed walking could be different enough to your running training while still building your endurance and mixing up your routine. Or add some hilly walks in, hills always get your heart pumping. Are you looking to help improve your breath work? Adding in a regular swimming session could be just the thing you need to become more in tune with your breath. Swimming has many benefits, including improving your lung capacity and aiding with recovery, as well as being very low impact compared to running. Before I started running, I was a synchronized swimmer and was surprised at how naturally breath work came to me when I started to run. Looking back, it was cross training that really helped. Cycling uses a similar leg movement to running, but like swimming, it's a lower impact sport that takes some of that pressure and stress from your joints. It's a great cardio workout, but gives some of those joints and muscles a well-needed rest. Adding cycling into your routine can support the cardiovascular fitness that you've been building up through running without actually running itself. The upper body is an area that can be forgotten about during marathon training, but it's an area that will get fatigued on the day. Are you looking to increase your upper body strength? The go-to thought for increasing strength is weightlifting, but there are other options too. Sports like climbing can be a great and fun way to boost that upper body strength without regularly weightlifting. Did you know that the focus on footwork in climbing also benefits your lower body strength? Perhaps this sport could give you everything you need for marathon training. Adding some plyometrics into your training can help you increase your maximum strength. Yes, drills, jumps, and gym exercises are the more conventional way, but did you know that a fun way to weave this in could be trying another sport altogether? Could you join something like a local volleyball team? Volleyball uses your hips, glutes, quads, hamstrings, and calves, and a game or two can be used to improve your plyometric capability. There are also sports that can be used to help improve your recovery times in between runs. Activities like yoga not only help you focus on breathing, but also on your flexibility and can be used to stretch out your muscles and aid recovery. A light yoga session built in regularly might be just what you need to keep your muscles happy and your legs ticking over. 
So now you've found an exciting new sport, it can be tempting to weave it into your training regularly, but don't get too carried away. Remember, the goal is to run the marathon and your other disciplines are there to further this goal. Too much in your training becomes counterproductive. It's important to have additional training as secondary and not take on too much. Running comes first. A 30 minute swim is not the same as a 30 minute run. While mixing up your training a bit, it is still important to keep a mixture of speed runs, long runs and easy runs as you build up to the big day. Your cross training is there to supplement your running, not replace it. Although sometimes if you're fatigued or worried about aches and pains, you could look to play it safe with a lower impact replacement. Cross training is there to give your joints and muscles a rest from the impact of running while still working on areas like cardiovascular fitness, which can help to improve your running. Try to avoid adding high impact sports like football and rugby, which could risk injury from heavy contact or constant changes of direction. With this in mind, it's also important to make sure you schedule in rest days. Just because you aren't running doesn't mean you are resting. Rest days are crucial to recovery and repair while you are building up those miles. Whatever you do, do not sacrifice them. Everyone is different and every individual body needs different things. Don't be afraid to get creative and test out a few different sports. Different disciplines will benefit different people. At the beginning of your training, try out a few different things to see what works for you. It's worth noting that it might take a while to adapt to a new sport or activity using different muscles and movements, so you might want to consider dedicating some time to finding the perfect sport for you during your off season to find out what's best to build into your training longer term. Cross training will be most beneficial when it is lower impact as it can push your body without adding pressure to the same muscles and joints over and over again. When you are choosing what to add into your training, try to choose something that will give your running muscles a rest while improving your overall fitness. One of the best things about cross training is there are lots of sports out there to help you keep fit and build you up when you're coming back from injury. For those of you who don't know, I'm currently in a period of rehabilitation from knee surgery and I've had to change up my running routine. Although it's been so hard not being able to run, I've been really pleasantly surprised at the options out there to keep me fit until I'm ready to run again. I've built in cycling to my routine to keep my fitness up and I've been pleasantly surprised at how much I can do without impacting money at all. And if you are looking to come back from an injury, there are plenty of options for you too. Consider a Pilates session or building up your strength through yoga. There are plenty of ways to keep active and stay fit whilst waiting to get back out on your run. Our video, The Most Effective Cross Training for Runners, goes into this further if this is for you. If you want to add in a non-running workout to your routine without spending lots of time investigating a new sport, don't worry, the Running Channel has got your back. We have a number of at-home workouts with a sole focus of improving your running. These workouts have a number of strength-building exercises as well as cardio to help you reach your running goals. But be warned, they're not easy. So Anna, now we've had a look at all the awesome sports out there, are you going to be adding some cross-training into your marathon plan? You know I love a cycle and I love a swim, but what about you at home? Are you going to try out our epic home workouts or maybe you want to learn a bit more about cross training or have you got any tips for our community or any questions for us? Let us know in the comments below. And we'll see you next time here on The Running Channel.